This episode is brought to you by the Let's Code Physics Patreon supporters. Let's suppose you are working with a vPython code that has several objects in it. Here we've got one sphere located two units to the right. Here we've got a second sphere located two units up. And here we've got a third sphere located two units to the left. When I run this, that's exactly what I get, a sphere to the right, a sphere going up and a sphere to the left. Now, maybe these spheres represent different things in the code, like maybe they're different atoms or maybe they're forming a water molecule. Maybe I'm checking for them to collide with each other. Maybe one of them has a higher velocity than the others. If I let these things start bouncing around and they're supposed to be different things, it's gonna be hard for me to visually tell them apart because they all look the same, right? I use the default color for all of them. They, they, they default to white. Um, the question is, how do I make them look different? That's where the color option comes in in vPython. When you create an object in vPython, you get to specify all sorts of options separated by commas. So I can say comma color equals, and then I can tell it what color I want. So for example, let's suppose I want this thing to be orange. In order for me to tell vPython what color I want, I actually have to tell it three pieces of information. I have to tell it a number to represent how much red is in the color, a number to represent how much green is in the color, and a number to represent how much blue is in the color. We call this the RGB code of the color that you want. This is a standard number pattern that is standardized across uh, different web browsers, across different graphics programs. It's, it's a standard way of representing different colors. So if I want orange, what I can do, I can open up my Google and I can ask for the RGB code for orange. There's a few options for it. You want the RGB. So I know that this thing needs to be 255, 165, and zero. That's three numbers that I need to report in a single quantity. The way you do that is with the vector function. So normally you think of vector as being an arrow pointing somewhere in space or as being a magnitude in a direction. And that's one way to think about a vector, but fundamentally a vector is just a list of numbers. And so the developers have kind of cleverly uh, made a redundant use of vector here. Uh, rather than defining a new type of thing you have to pass, they're just using the vector here. So I know that my orange sphere needs to be 255 parts red, 165 parts green, and zero parts blue. Now let's see what happens when we press control two. I actually end up with this thing being ridiculously yellow. Like, I don't know if you're squinting at the screen right now, but I'm squinting at the big yellow one, the sun there. Let's try to find out what went wrong. The difference is, and this is something that I have to be reminded of every time, so don't feel bad if you forget this. Standard RGB codes are scaled out of a thousand. On the other hand, for glow script, this thing needs to be measured out of one. I need to get this kind of as a percentage. So this needs to be what we call a unit vector. So I can just put a hat around that, press control two, and there's my orange sphere. It's a little bit more Tennessee orange than Florida orange than I would like. So I might play around with the value a little bit, but that's how I can get my color there is just by looking up the RGB code. Now that is one way to do it and it works and it's okay. But the good folks at vPython know that you don't wanna to have to look that up every time and that you don't have to remember that it's a hat of a vector of three numbers. So there's actually a library of colors already built in. So if you say color equals color dot orange, it's gonna know what you mean. So what we're doing here, this is the option color. We're saying that we want the spheres color to equal something that's pulled out of the color library or the color reference and we're looking for the object orange in there. Let me show you how this works out. Here's the orange that came from the RGB code. Here's the orange that came from vPython. Again, a little bit more burnt than bright, but it works as an orange there. vPython has lots of colors already stored in, like it has color.red. There's my orange, there's my red. Notice I didn't need to know what the RGB code is. Spoiler, it's a one zero zero. Uh, I can also call up color.blue, control two. I can also call up those random colors that I'm supposed to teach about in a physics class, like color.cyan. Ooh, there's a cyan color right there. Maybe I make the last one a color equals color.magenta, control two. 
So you can get all sorts of different colors on there. Now to prove to you that it's calling these up as a vector, let me show you print color dot magenta. So when it goes to print color dot magenta, it says, okay, that is a one in the red, a zero in the green and a one in the blue. Okay, so I guess it doesn't want a unit factor. That's interesting. What will it give me for print color dot orange, I wonder? Control two. No, okay, so it doesn't have to be a unit factor. I guess what you want is the ratio of those two. So let's get the ratio of 165 out of 255. Sure enough, it's a 0 0.6, and that's what it's got stored as color orange here. Okay, so I could change this to a 1 and a 0 0.6. Uh, there we go. Now I can get rid of this hat business. Okay, so as long as one of them is 1 or you're doing it as a percentage, then that's, that's how it wants it. Okay. Now that's not the only feature I can use to make these different from each other. Maybe I really wanna focus on one of these and I just wanna kinda of know where the other two are but I don't want them to get in the way. I can also make each of these slightly transparent. The way you do that is with an option called opacity. Now, this is where it gets a little bit backwards. You're probably accustomed to thinking in terms of transparency, right? So 100% transparent means I can see through it. 0% transparent means I cannot see through it. Well, the opposite of transparent is opaque. It's one of those vocabulary words that you were probably exposed to in third grade that might have slipped your mind by now. But basically, if you have an opacity of one, then it's entirely opaque. You cannot see through it. So my cyan sphere defaults to an opacity of one, right? I cannot see through that. If you can see through that, um, you may need to contact a medical professional. Um, but let's see what happens if I turn this to a 0 0.5, make it 50% opaque, 50% opaque is 50% transparent. So you see what happens when I'm looking through the cyan sphere now, is I can see the orange sphere through that. Same thing if I rotate it this way, I can start to see the magenta sphere through the cyan sphere. And basically what it's doing is it's telling the, the GPU in your computer to let the pixels in the back there render uh, in addition to the pixels in the front here, it's kind of combining those. Whereas for opaque, it just says, nope, just these pixels, none of the ones in the back there. We don't need to worry about those. And so you can have different differing levels of opacity. You can go down to opacity equals 0 0.1. That's gonna make it very, very transparent. I can just barely see a ghost of a bubble there. I can also drop this all the way down to zero. Watch what happens to the cyan sphere, or rather, watch or rather don't watch what happens because it's entirely transparent now. I cannot see it. I can see a little bit of a, oh no, that's, that's, that's my mouse on the screen, excuse me. I thought I could see a little bit of a reflection there, but that was my mouse. Um, yeah, now it's entirely transparent. That's the same uh, effect as putting on visible equals false, right? So if you're gonna set opacity to zero, you, you can also set visible equal to false. Those do the same thing. So like, for example, if I wanted to focus on my orange sphere, I can have the other two spheres have an opacity less than one. And now, no matter how I rotate this, I'll always be able to see the orange sphere through the other two spheres, if that's maybe the more important sphere of the three. So anyway, that's a little bit of information on how you can treat color and opacity in vPython. I hope that's of interest to you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Maybe I won't see you if your opacity is zero. <laughs>